How you going? Palms here from uh, Palms Out Fishing. This is about my 10th take now on uh, trying to do an intro on this. I do not like looking at my head in the phone. Anyway, today I wanted to do a video on uh, one of my favorite apps um, that I use to get me onto fish and in particular gummy shark, which is uh, pretty much my favorite fish to, to fish for. Um, the app is called Navionics Boating and Marine. And what it is, it's a app that shows you the depths and contours of the water of the area that you're going to be heading to. So you can see, you're, let's say that you're aiming at hitting up Summers, Balnaring, uh, Warneet, Lang Lang, Coronella, wherever you're gonna head to, you can look at the, um, the Navionics app and you can look at the channels and the um, edges and all that kind of stuff that you know that you're going to be aiming at fishing. So why that is important, you say, well, no one said it, but I, I did. Uh, the reason why it's important is because gummy sharks are predominantly known that they, they run up and down the channels and then they go in and feed and that. They're not like a brim or a silver trevally that'll um, school up underneath a pylon or something like that and that'll be where it fishes and lives and whatever for its time. Gummy sharks are a moving fish and they come in and feed where they or are usually feed but they travel a lot of distances in and out with the tide. Um, and, and as fishermen, we don't go chase them. We, what we do is we find the locations that um, are more likely they're gonna be coming through to head into their feeding zones. Um, and then we sit there, do, do your burly trail, present good baits, and then we wait through, wait for them to come through. Essentially, when you're fishing for gummy sharks, you're fishing to intercept. But in saying that, it's, you've gotta be very smart with where you choose to anchor up I suppose. Um, in the future part of the video I'm going to be showing a, a little sneak peek of what the uh, the Navionics <clears throat> app does um, and how it uses the sonar and, and whatever to find those depths but I'm also going to be showing some of my marks that I use um, but more importantly so that you guys can use essentially some of the stuff that I've used more importantly why I've chosen those spots because it's not as simple as you find an edge or a drop off which goes to two to four or six to eight or nine to 10 meters or anything like that. There's more to it than just, there's more to it than just that. You've got to be able to find the highways that they're going through. My, I call all my fishing spots essentially KSE spots. So your aim is you want to find the highway and then you want to put yourself in a spot when they're moving to where they're going to be heading to they get the smell of your bait, and we know that um, the gummy sharks are like, you know, wolf hounds, are, sorry, sniff hounds, or whatever those hounds are. And then they, they get into your area that they're running, and they smell all your baits and stuff, and then they come up, just like KFC, when us guys are driving in the car, we pull in, they wanna get a feed, and then they'll keep going. But hopefully when they pull into our spot, we're on and game over. So that's, in, that's one of the most important things. You've got to intercept where they're going to be going and then you've got to know where they're going to and more than likely where they're going to be coming from. So if you've got a big deep channel that's, um, that's coming in and you know that the tide's coming in and let's say you're fishing at uh, Balnaring and there's certain spots at Balnaring that fish very well for a surf fisherman, then you want to find an edge that leads into those spots. And I'll talk about that later in the video, but understanding where the fish move from and where they move to is, is massively critical on um, getting that hook up. And depth isn't an issue. For people out there that think they need to go paddle out 15 kilometers into Western Port to find a fish, you're wrong. What you gotta do is find your edges that lead you to a, uh, where, they, where they feed. All right, so that's the, um, the intro. Next, what we'll go through is um, the app and what it does. So these are the um, some of the features in the Boating, Marine and Lakes app that um, we'll be talking about in this video. Uh, the main one is the depth contours and uh, such, uh, but we'll go through that further in the video. But uh, that's the app that you want, Boating, Marine and Lakes. So this is the, um, the basic view of uh, the depth contours that the Navionics app will show you. This is the western uh, entrance of uh, Western Port Bay. And uh, as you can see here, it's uh, denoted by the different colors. 
So if you click on the screen and uh, start dragging the cursor around, it also tells you the GPS marks and the depths, which I found really handy. Uh, this spot at uh, Shoreham, that's got a really um, nice edge on it. As you can see, if you drag it left to right, it shows you the depth. So you've got uh, five meters on the left, the contour line on the 10 meters there. And if you go to the east, it um, shows that it drops off all the way to 15, 15 meters. If you click on the bottom right hand side um, of the app, you've got the uh, home icon, which gives you the distance that you'll um, be, be traveling. So this is 2.2K um, paddle out from the shore and um, beach road reserve. Um, it's not a bad paddle, especially in good conditions. Now coming up to the northeast, we can see them all the, uh, another location uh, just off Port Leo. The fish is uh, well for the whiting and the, and the gummy sharks, but especially for the whiting, they don't mind coming in there at all. And again, it's, it's on a nice edge. This is one where you want to um, go across over to the Google Maps or the satellite image on your, uh, on your Navionics app just to get, make sure that you're over a nice sandy patch and not the seaweed. Chose another hole here. Um, it's a lot deeper than what it um, denotes in that picture, but um, it's a, another good fishing icon. Now this edge is um, the one that I'll be talking about in one of my new, uh, the next features in this video. Um, and it goes into a little bit more detail whilst I've, uh, why I've chosen that location. So click in the bottom right hand side cursor, dragging those two uh, little pins. That'll tell you how far you got to paddle. So that's usually a good paddle. It's only 1.6K. You just really want to stay away from the southeasterly or southwesterly winds when you're paddling out to that location, especially if you're uh, if it's over 15 knots and it's wind against tide. It can be absolutely bloody terrible. Even on a 13, 14 knot, uh, 14 knot wind, it's really hazardous. I've also got um, another part in the video where I'm talking about this location just off Jandrup and it explains, um, and I do have the fishing marks on it located, but these edges here are really, really um, good to fish. On an incoming or outcoming uh, tide, I haven't found any difference, but uh, this is where we launch from, from the Lang Lang Caravan Park. Um, it's a 1.8K paddle out, but south of it in the next video, I'll, I'll show you the um, location of Bay Road where I come out to um, to get to it's about there from, um, that's that's pretty much where the Bay Road um, launching spot is. And you can get right out to that 7.5 meter hole. So that's really efficient, especially if you are, uh, when the snapper are running, it just seems like they come through there. And it's a narrow little channel, which I think helps out a fair bit, especially if you've got a good... Uh... So in the top uh, left-hand side, you'll see a, um, a pretty common place there Surf fishermen have a lot of luck at bow and arrowing. The water there is fairly shallow, but the gummies come in along there and they um, they feed off the crabs and, and so forth. But if you look back, coming back to where the little house is for one of my fishing marks, you'll see that there's a really good edge to the left of it, to the right of it, and then there's a deeper channel that runs straight through that. So, like, I mean, for us to foresee what the gummy sharks are going to be doing on an incoming tide, they're going to be coming straight through fish running along those edges to the left and then heading around to where the um all the crabs and that locations are but they're still going to be feeding around where the uh where the the sand beds are and the seaweed beds so we're just trying to get into a location where we're going to intercept them so i i really do um like that mark i've had a lot of success um off that mark there with a couple of um six foot uh, little gumbos and a 20 point kilo, 20.1 pb but it's just trying to work out those contours try and find that edge that they're uh, going to be coming in at and then we use the um the the uh the google satellite maps to really get us in a good location that's going to be not um having us anchor up over a seaweed bed So Lang Lang's another popular location for a lot of kayak uh, fishermen. You do have to be aware that um, looking at the Willy Weather app that you have a metre of uh, tide coming in and out. 
Um, but like, I mean, all these locations that I've marked here, they, they've got really good edges that uh, the running gummy shark snapper come through, especially around that 7.5 metre hole uh, on an incoming or outgoing tide. The other uh, thing that a lot of people forget to do is that we've got Google Maps up our sleeve. Everyone uses it. Change it over to um, satellite, and you can see the quality of uh, the imaging that um, that Google provides you. So let's say that we're um, we're fishing out at shore uh, this weekend. You can see right here. So the quality is just fairly phenomenal. I found it fairly accurate as well. So. If you get to uh, one of your depth marks or whatever, switch it over quickly to your um, satellite maps and you'll be able to tell pretty clearly what's underneath you to the left, to your right, to the front and um, it gives you a really good indication where to anchor up. You don't want to be anchoring up on uh, too much seaweed or it's just going to be snag after snag as the wind and tide take you left and right. So use that, um, that uh, Google. That's, uh, that's my two cents. You can uh, take it or leave it, but it's um, proven very, very successful for me. That's, uh, that's how I fish. They're the strategies that I use to um, get onto them. And, you know, I've only started doing the videos and stuff like that in the last five weeks, but um, I lay in consistent big fish and it, it helps out and it works for me. If it doesn't work for you, then um, that's fine. But all I want to do is just help out and and if I can give anyone out there a bit of a helping hand and help the newcomer or the person that's um, already been doing it for a bit but not getting much success, then um, so be it. But um, cheers, thanks for watching. Make sure that you are uh, subscribed, not worry about likes or anything like that. I don't need an ego, but for me to take this to the next level, I need to get that uh, subscribers up. So yeah, cheers guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Uh, the next one will be, we're fishing Tamby Point on Thursday. Um, hopefully taking my brother out there and we'll be using the uh, Navionics app to take us to the point, the uh, ma marker, and I'll just do a little screenshot of it now. So that's where we'll be going. We're just going to be fishing for some uh, gummies then. And uh, yeah, take it around, take it easy.